keep that going. things go your way, God is good. When things don't go your way, God is still good because God is God and he's God all by himself and he don't need none of us in order for him to be God. So we thank God that we serve a God that is good, who is kind, who is loving, who is everything we need him to be. The Bible says when he answered Moses' question, he, Moses said, you know, what is your name? He said, I am that I am. Whatever you need me to be, I can be that. So that's how you can know that God is good. Good morning, First Baptist. Good morning. Uh, good morning to those who are visiting with us virtually. It is always a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord. If you are happy to be in the presence of God one more time, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 It's good to be amongst like-minded believers. If you would stand with me for our call to worship. The call to worship will be taken from the 63rd number of the Psalms, reading the first four verses. Uh, and it reads, O oh God, you are my God. Mm -hmm. Earnestly I say. You. Mm -hmm. My soul thirsts for you, my yeah. flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory, because your steadfast love is better than life. Yes, Lord. My lips will praise you, Thank you Lord. so I will bless you as long as I live. Oh, yeah. In your name I will lift up yeah. my hands. Yeah. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers here and the of his most holy yeah. and righteous yeah. word. Uh, will you bow with me for a word of prayer? And turn on all wise, Father God. We uh, come with joyful hearts. Uh, we bow down heads, dear Father God, simply to say thank you this morning, God, uh, to say thank you for being an awesome God, being a wonderful God, being a gracious and loving and kind God, being the God who loved us so much that you sent your only son to die on the cross for our sins, Lord. So we simply say thank you this morning, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to come into this place that has been set aside to worship your holy name for certainly God you are worthy to be praised Lord for you have been better to us than we have ever been to ourselves so again we say thank you Lord we thank you for being able to uh, 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 just praise your holy name Lord we we can say thank you so many times but it would never be enough uh, uh, for, for the magnitude uh, uh, of you and how much you have loved us, how much you care for us, how much you have intervened in our lives, God. We simply just want to say thank you, God. Lord, we want to lift up the service to you, God. We pray that everything that we sing, everything we say, everything we pray, and the preach word that we go for, God, that you will be lifted up, that you will get the glory to Father God. We, um, we lift up our pastor to you this morning, dear Father God. Use him in a mighty way, and Lord, and have whatever that you gave him throughout the week that he preaches it with boldness and conviction and with power that would help us walk uh, uh, more faithfully uh, in you, more faithful in your word, more faithful and dedicated to you, that we may be a beacon of light in this world, in our community, in our homes. Then, Father God, wherever we step foot, people will be able to see us, but they would see you, then, Father, uh, and that they would be able to feel you and know that you are present and that you are real and that you are an awesome and good God. So, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and we give you all the honor and glory. It is in your Son, Jesus' name we pray that the church say together, amen.
worship you.
morning, good morning. Good morning. How many of you can honestly say you rejoice for everything he's done for you? Yeah. And I ask that because I know a lot of us came in here this morning having some things we're still waiting for him to do. But are you able to continue to rejoice even in the midst of your waiting? Yeah. Yes, sir. That's the real challenge. We can thank you for thank him for the things he's already done. Can we continue to wait and praise and acknowledge him in the midst of the storms that we may be going through? Um, it's prayer time this morning, church family. Um, I want to pose a question to you all this morning. How many of you all, when you pray, pray with the heart of faith? And I ask that because oftentimes when we pray, we just ramble off a lot of things. <laughs> All the things that we're dealing with, all the things that we're going through, all the stuff that other people, somebody else may be dealing with. But if we're not praying with a heart of faith, merely all we're doing is rambling. Yes, he hears you, but he wants you to believe that what you're asking him, yeah. he's going to come through yeah. and do. Yeah. So as we pray this morning, I want you all to put whatever it is that you're putting before him and do it with a heart of faith. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We all please stand as we pray this morning. Um, as always, when I pray, I always want you all to think of someone or something and lift it up to God as I pray. Um, this is corporate prayer. So while you may only hear my voice, I still want you all to go before the Father uh, for some someone else. Amen. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Heavenly Father God, we just come to you this morning, Lord thanking you and rejoicing for all the things that you have done, Heavenly Father God. We thank you for loving us. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for embracing us. And thank you for protecting us throughout this whole week, Heavenly Father God. We pray and thank you for getting us to Sunday to Sunday, Heavenly Father God. For we know no, someone didn't make it through this week, Heavenly Father God. And Lord, we just pray and we just want to acknowledge you and thank you for removing obstacles that we could not see, Heavenly Father God. We pray and thank you for giving us the wisdom and knowledge to overcome obstacles that were there, Heavenly Father God. But Lord, ultimately, Lord, we just want to rejoice and thank you for you just being a God who loves us abundantly, Lord, who loves us more than we love ourselves, God. A love, God that loves us no matter what we do, no matter what we say, or no matter what we think, Heavenly Father, God. Many of us came into this place this morning, Lord, with our own situations and burdens we may be dealing with, Heavenly Father, God. And Lord, we pray that as we prepare to lay those burdens before you, God, help our hearts to be in the right place as we pray unto you, Heavenly Father, God. We come to you this morning with the heart of faith, God. We come to you this morning with the heart of expectancy, Heavenly Father, God. Many of us came through these doors this morning looking for you, Heavenly Father, God. Looking for you to make a way out of the stresses in our lives, Heavenly Father, God. Someone may not love themselves the way they need to love themselves, Heavenly Father. God. Someone may be dealing with some self-esteem issues, Heavenly Father God. Someone may be dealing with some emotional stresses in their lives, Heavenly Father God. Someone may be dealing with some strains in their relationships, Heavenly Father God. Their kids may not be acting right, Heavenly Father God. Things at work are not going the way we want them to go, Heavenly Father God. Lord, somebody may need a physical blessing this morning, God. They have sickness in their bodies, Lord. We are dealing with headaches and aches in our bodies, Heavenly Father God, and we're expecting you to touch and heal us this morning, Heavenly Father God. Some of us may have more bills than we have money to pay those bills, Heavenly Father God. So we're looking for you to provide a way out of those situations, Heavenly Father God. And with a heart of faith, Lord, we know in your word, Lord, that you said if we pray with faith, God, you will come through for us, Heavenly Father. But Lord, even in the midst of waiting, Heavenly Father, Help us to have a praise on our lips, Heavenly Father God. Help us to continue to lift up your name, Heavenly Father God. Help us to continue to do the things you called us to do while we are waiting, Heavenly Father God. And Lord, we pray and uplift you this morning, God. Asking that your Holy Spirit consumes us this morning as we praise and we worship you, Lord. As we receive a word of encouragement and strength to push us to be better people, God. 
We just pray that our spirits connect with yours in this place this morning, God. Help us to leave out of here differently than what we came in, Heavenly Father, God. Help us to find a way that we can grow, Heavenly Father, God. There's no sense of coming into this place every Sunday, Lord, and leaving out of here the same way we came in, God. Help us to connect with you, Lord, so that we can be all that you have called us to be, Heavenly Father, God. And Lord, we pray that you just bless Pastor Scott, Lord, as he brings forth the word this morning, Lord, that you will speak through him, that you will use him mightily, Heavenly Father, God. And Lord, we just pray that in the midst of waiting, Lord, help us to hold fast to your word, help us to hold fast to your hand, and help us to hold fast to the faith that you have instilled within us, Lord. We know that you are God loves us, and we know that you're a God that blesses us, Lord. So we just pray and thank you for the things that you've done, and we pray and thank you for the things that you're going to do. And it's in your mighty matchless son Jesus' name we pray. We give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, and we give you all the praise. Everybody shout it hallelujah, hallelujah. and amen. amen. It's giving time, church. Hey, hey, we've been singing. We're going to rejoice in our giving, and we're going to give in faith. Understanding is for us by giving in faith that I am giving it to the Lord. He's the one who gave it to me. He's only asking for 10 and understanding that I have faith that the Lord would take care of me and make sure that I have what I need. I didn't say anything about what but that I have what I need. So as we get ready to give, you can give three ways. You can text. Or you can give online to fbcnt.org, or you can mail it to uh, P.O. Box 2963. Or we'll have collection plates in the back as far as back where the Urshas is at. You can write a check, give cash. And we do this, guys. This, uh, we do this, uh, church family saints, um, obedience. And, and once you realize that whatever I have, I only have because the Lord yeah. has given it yeah. to yeah. me. And, and we give back where his church can affect those that are outside these walls. Uh, we just, you know, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So it's given time. We're going to give, uh, we're going to rejoice in our giving, but we're also going to give in faith, understanding that whatever I need, yeah. uh, not want, that the Lord is able to provide me with what I need. church. This song has ministered in my life for many, many years, and no matter what you are going through, I pray that you remember you are always safe in his arms.
in the secret place of the Most High. Abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He is our safe place. Yeah. Our safe room. Yes. That's why the word says God is our refuge and strength. Yes. Very present help in time of trouble. Yes. God, we come now with anxious minds, with some troubled hearts, some God weary from burdens of the week, some God with no hope for tomorrow, but we come. We come, God, as empty vessels before that great and full fountain, needing God to hear a word from you. And God, we know your word is like the rain and snow that descends from the earth, Whatever it is sent, it will accomplish that for which it was sent. God, for someone, this is a right now word that they need right now. For some, God, this is a later on word they need to deposit and come back to whenever the trouble comes. Whatever our predicament, our situation, our life event, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God, it is to you that we come because you are the source and the strength of our life. God, remove all distraction, remove all doubt, remove all hindrance that would first keep and prevent the unsaved from being convicted of your word and being drawn into the kingdom and family of God. God, for the redeemed who've already said so in song, God, we pray that you would allow uh, nothing to hinder them from feasting on your word and growing in your grace. And last but not least, God, move me. Hide me behind your cross so 
will only see the Savior lifted high above the earth. For you said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all unto me. God is in the precious, wonderful name of our Savior, we pray. Amen. And thank God. I invite you this morning, if uh, you are able and willing, uh, to stand and join me in 1 Corinthians, the 10th uh, chapter. And for those viewing, uh, certainly we pray that you honor uh, the reading of the word as, as we do in person. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, reading from the New Living Translation. Translation. The temptations in your life, the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you may endure. I want to talk about an escape hatch in the maze of your problems an escape hatch in the maze of your problems. This, my friends, is a great word of assurance, and a reasonable paraphrase of verse 13 might be this. Every trial that you endure is part of human experience, but God is faithful to us. He will not allow us to suffer more than we can stand, but he will give us the power to stand up in our troubles. Someone came in this place today looking for one or two things, or maybe both. You got dressed up, drove in 90 degree, almost 100 degree temperatures, looking for Jesus, and a way out. Uh, so, somebody uh, is, is on their phone, on their laptop, uh, viewing this service. Uh, they had a rough night last night. Uh, they didn't know what they were going to do this morning, but uh, the Lord led you to our website, to our Facebook page, because you're looking for one or two things. Looking for Jesus or a way out. And probably more of us than are willing to admit came looking for Jesus. But even more than that, we're looking for Jesus to provide for us a way out. Listen, this word, my friends, is a great word of assurance. And I, I feel convicted uh, as I progress uh, in years of ministry, uh, thinking of all of the times that, that, that I've glibly, offered words of promise to someone in just a casual way. Someone struggling, and we randomly throw out some scripture we think might encourage them real quickly, right, and keep going on our way. Uh, God, God won't put more on you than they, you can bear. I mean, they, they're hurting, they're, uh, they're crying, and uh, the first little uh, uh, Christian uh, uh, synopsis that comes to our mind, we just throw out. Just look unto the hills from whence cometh your help, girl. You know your help comes from the Lord. I mean, everything around them is falling apart. And uh, you just want to throw anything randomly out, hoping it might stick and help. I feel convicted. Because in my business, folk are in trouble and uh, they, they need some help and some hope. And, and beyond saying set up an appointment, uh, I may throw out uh, just a, a, a scripture that I think might, might uh, medicate them temporarily or put a Band-Aid on to help them hold on. But listen, folk need more than that. Uh, they need a way out and some instruction. Often we really know better than Job's friends. 
we can be some miserable comforters. I mean, half time, we half heartedly really listening to folk anyway. Because we got our own problems. Let's tell the truth. We got our own problems, our own predicaments, and many times we are half hearted listening to the struggles and the trials of other folk. So, listen, we've got to take a look at this verse in a new way and not just glibly pronounce this text, but demand explanation. Listen, this text gives us God's perspective on our problem. Listen, if you allow yourself to think too much on your problems, you will magnify your problems so much that they will overtake you emotionally and you will begin to feel there is no way out. Uh, you will begin to feel uh, that your, your, your back is so far up against the wall that the rubber has met the road, that your situation is so unique and so desperate that there is no way on earth that you will ever get out. In fact, some of you have been in your predicament for so long. You think that God is no longer hearing, listening, and certainly answering your prayer. But I've got good news for you today. God has an escape hatch for the maze of your problems. Psalm 147, verse 3, says that God is near unto the brokenhearted, and he binds up our wounds. That word binds up in Hebrew is more than just put a Band-Aid on. It, it suggests the idea, uh, if you the story of the Good Samaritan. When that man was left on the side of the road, we see the same tense and usage of the word. Uh, the man didn't just simply put a band-aid on the man and say, I hope you get better. Uh, it said that, that he bound up his wounds. Uh, in other words, he, he put a compress he, 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 he made sure that, that, that his wounds at that moment were taken care of enough that he could then put him on his animal and then take him someplace where he could get more help than he got on the side of the road. But not only that, it also implies that he made sure that if the man did insurance or no way to pay that he made sure he dropped enough dime to make sure that when he went away and came back the man would not only have a band-aid but he would be whole so when the Lord provides a way out he doesn't just provide a, a band-aid he totally heals and restores us listen First thing this text teaches us, it says in verse 13, the temptations, troubles, trials in your life are no different from what others experience. It speaks about the universality of our problems. Many of us begin to feel like Elijah when Jahab and Jezebel were hot on his tracks. Elijah hunkered down in a cave and said, my situation is worse than anybody else's. Woe is me. I ain't ever going to get out of this. Lord, why don't you just take my life? Uh, and many of us, listen, I know you're hurting, but many of us can act like ain't nobody ever been through nothing ever before. Many of us can act like God ain't never brought us through anything before. But guess what? Here's the good news. There is a universal aspect to your problem. You're not going through anything that anybody else ain't ever went through. And I want to underscore went through because they have come through it. Matter of fact, that our problems are so universal that Paul says in Romans 15 and verse 4 that I've written 39 previous books, God the Holy Spirit says, that are written for your comfort and learning that through patience you might have hope, that you might have some examples to let you know that God did it before and God will do it again. The text says someone... Somebody has been through it before. We tend to feel isolated. 
Nobody knows how I feel. Listen, you're not alone. There are others who know how you feel. In fact, that text, that phrase, which says common to human experience is a Greek word that means things that are normally experienced by human beings and are not exceptional. Things that are normally experienced by human beings and not exceptional. But whenever we think about them too much, without thanking God in all things, we blow up our problems bigger than God. But the Bible says you've got to blow up God so we realize that God is bigger than our problems. And that is a trick of the enemy to get us so engaged with our emotions and our problems that we magnify the problem and minimize God. But if you don't learn anything else today, whenever you're going through a problem, you got to minimize your problem and magnify God. Understand there is a universal aspect to our problems. No temptation, no trouble is inherently stronger than our spiritual resources. But then also realize, because of the universality of our problems, you need to be in the fellowship of believers. Psychologists recognize the therapeutic value of support groups. They do. Psychologists know that one of the ways you can help get by is to be in a network or a group of people that can support you. Addiction counseling is often conducted by those who have been addicted. Because if you've been through it, you can tell folk, listen, there is nothing exceptional about your situation. I was addicted too, but God brought me out. And the good news, the same God that brought me out took the taste out of my mouth, can take the same taste out of your mouth. But listen, uh, if that's, not, if that's not enough, uh, if support groups aren't enough, uh, if, if one addict or a recovering addict uh, ministering to you is not enough, listen, uh, there is another level that we have of not being alone. Hebrews 4, 15 and 16 says that he was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Uh, Jesus went through everything that you and I go through, uh, and he came through it. That's why it says in verse 16, now we have a very faithful high priest that we can go to to find help, grace in a time of need. Listen, I know your problem is not unique, but God is still on the throne. There's something unique, before I move to point two, about the names of God. Uh, when Moses, when Moses uh, was of God and God told Moses I want you to go and Moses said wait a minute I'll go but I don't even know your name God said tell them I am that I am uh, many times uh, the Lord when he reveals himself in the form of a name he says I am Jehovah Rapha God your healer I am Jehovah Nisi God your banner I am Jehovah Shalom, God, your peace. I am Jehovah Jireh, God, your provider. There's something unique about the names of God because human names are nouns, but the names of God are verbs. Because God is going to act. He does not want a static name. His names have a verb attached to them. Uh, my name is about doing something. My, my name is about providing something. My name is about bringing uh, something. I am that I am. And if you're looking for a way out, he said, I am that I am. So we see the universality of our problems in the text. It says, the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. Now, the B part of verse 13, I'm going to skip, come back to later. God is faithful. But I want to move to the next part, which says, he will not allow temptations to be more than you can stand. That speaks to the inability 
that we have to cope with our problems. The inability that we have to cope with our problems all by ourselves. Now, uh, the first part of getting out, recovery, deliverance, is admitting you need some help and you can't help yourself. Because often what we see in recidivism is people saying, I need help, but I can do it by myself. So you keep trying to do it by yourself and you keep repeating the same cycle. That's what recidivism is. But we're going to stop this spiritual recidivism and stop dealing with our problems the same way we've always dealt with them by admitting that we are incapable. We do not have the ability to deal with our problems all by ourselves. That's why we are some emotional wrecks. That's why we can be all over the place because we're trying to handle it all by ourselves. Some people are just unable to stand up to the stresses of life. But I also got to add something. Many of us, again, we glibly, when somebody's hurting, we just throw out. God won't put more on you than you can bear. God will never give you more than you can handle. That sounds good, but the Bible don't teach that. Sound good, we throw it out. The Bible does not teach that. It is only when we are unable or incapable of standing on our own that we admit that we need God. Can I throw another scripture out? If you'll go to 2 Corinthians, uh, the Lord just gave this to me, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, verse uh, 8 uh, and 9. 2 Corinthians 1, verse 8. And nine. Paul says in verse 8 of 2 Corinthians 1, we think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure. Let me say it again. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure. And we thought we would not live through it. Now, now Paul says, God put more on us than we could stand. And we didn't think we was going to get through it. In fact, he says in verse 9, we expected to die. But as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely on God who raises the dead. Stop saying that. God will put more on you than you can stand. So you'll stop relying on yourself and trust in him. If you can bear it, you'll never come to God. So thank God for your mountains. Thank God for your valleys. Thank God for the burdens that you can't bear. And stop relying on yourself and trust in God. There's so much spiritual programming that needs to be programmed out of us. Uh, we, we, we watching all these sitcoms, and they said it in good times all the time, God don't like ugly. We say it in our culture all the time. You better hope God like ugly. The Bible says God demonstrated his love towards us when we were our ugliest, when we were sinners. You better hope God, I, I know God like ugly because he liked me and sent his son to die on the cross. We, we got to stop just throwing stuff out that ain't in the Bible because we got folk running around thinking, I'm all right, you all right. No, you ain't all right. But you need to come to Jesus just as you are, weary, wounded, and sad. You'll find in him a resting place, and he will make you glad. Listen, when we are unable to deliver ourselves, God is able. When we're unable to stand under the pressure, 
God strengthens us. God will give you more than you can handle, so you'll trust in him and not in yourself. Third thing we see in the text, uh, in verse 13, uh, it says, when you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. Uh, this speaks to the escapability from our problems. The escapability from our problems. Listen, if a fire break out, first thing you're going to look for is the exit sign. That's why they put there. So you'll know a way out when trouble comes. And I want you to know God has an evacuation plan for your troubles. He got an exit sign. You just got to keep following him in the dark until God shows you that way out. Now, now notice, I entitled this message intentionally, An Escape Hatch from the Maze of Our Problems. But understand, what is a maze to us is not a maze to God. To God, it is more of a labyrinth. There's a difference between a labyrinth and a maze. A maze has a whole lot of ways in, whole lot of dead alleys, whole lot of dead spots, and a whole lot of ways out. In a maze, when you get confused, you have a whole lot of options, a whole lot of ways to go, in trying to get your way out. There's a whole lot of ways in, a whole lot of ways out, but there's also a whole lot of traps, a whole lot of dead spots, a whole lot of dead ends, a whole lot of dead places. In a labyrinth, there's only one way in and one way out. So if you get all the way to the center, there's still only one way out. And I just come to tell somebody today, your life might be a maze to you, but it is not a maze to God. It is a labyrinth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Listen, you got to keep running to Jesus, the author and finish of your faith. When you lift your eyes to God, he'll show you his exit strategy. Listen, that way out, that word escape, uh, literally means to take a step out, to walk out of a difficult place, to walk out of a trap, to walk out of a place that is not good for you. Listen, there is a place along the Hudson River. As you are sailing, as you are navigating on a ferry, uh, you'll, you'll seem to be entirely hemmed in by hills. The path move steadily towards a rocky wall. It seems as if mountains are around you, and if you don't stop, you'll be dashed to pieces. But just as you come within the shadow of the mountain, an opening is suddenly discovered, and you sail into the most beautiful bay ever. Listen, my friend, I know you're struggling. I know it's getting hard, but keep going, and God will reveal your way out your exit in time. Listen, God revealed his way out on a hill called Calvary. Over 2,000 years ago, we were stuck, bound by sin, bound by a past, but Jesus paid it all, died, was buried, rose from the grave. He sits at the right hand of the Father saying, I am your way out. Listen, God has an escape hatch for the labyrinth of our problems, and that escape hatch is Jesus. Once again, Sister Kelly, I'm going to be at home trying to figure out where all that just came from. In our, in his teaching, Pastor Scott said that uh, an escape hatch uh, with a maze of our problems, looking to Jesus for, or looking to him for, for a way out. And he said something that hit me when he said, uh, when he talked about the one-liners that we give for people 
that we don't know exactly what they're going through, but we know there is help over the hills. But we never tell them who exactly is over the hill. We just tell them to look to the hills from which cometh their help. I'm guilty of the same thing. I was convicted of that a long time ago. As I do evangelism, I used to just give them the Romans roll and keep moving. But right here is what I have when you in school. It's called flashcards. I have flashcards everywhere. I carry them in my pocket, in my bag, they're in my car, and there is some in the drawer, in the drawer at my in my office. In my spare time, I go over my flashcards. I go over my flashcards because when I tell an individual that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, then I need to put something behind that. I need to tell them who the all is. The all is every human being that walks the face of this earth. So you don't have to get your life right before you come to the Lord. Like Pastor said, you just got to come. Because I need a support system that, 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 that helps me get my life right because I don't know how to live a life of righteousness because I've been so busy living for Satan. So the Bible says, for all have sinned. It says, all have fallen short of the glory of God. And in that all, that includes me also. Before the Lord, I am... Uh, a, a, a filthy rag even though I'm trying to live a righteous life I still don't cut me off in traffic don't approach me in, up, in any other way than what I am because he's still in there and he may arise but then I know better so I know to go to the Lord immediately and say father forgive me because I was out of character just then Forgive me right then and there because I know that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and the Bible says I believe in my heart that God rose him from the dead. The Bible says instantaneously in that very moment I am saved even though just hours ago or a minute ago I done something wrong but I just confessed the Lord now the Bible says I am saved because I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead and with my mouth confession was made unto righteousness it didn't say I had to speak in tongues be slain in the spirit it didn't even say I had to be baptized all it says is confess and believe and then surround yourself with people who can try and keep you upright. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord Jesus in the free pardon of your sins, if you're out there in media land and you just happen to be listening today and you don't know who he is, but you know something led you to cutting that computer wrong and something led you to this service this morning, I want you to know that you can be made right today if you just open your mouth and pour your heart out to the Lord and say, I know I have lived a life not becoming a child of God. I know I have done everything on my own. I know I have tried to be all that I can be. I know that in, in this world, I've been living what I consider my best life. But it all went against who you stand for. Lord, I'm hurting and I need help now. I need you to enter my life and begin to break down those layers. I need you to change me from what I was to what you would want me to be. All you have to do, open your mouth and confess to him that you know that God sent a son down 42 generations, stopped off in a town called Bethlehem to be born to a virgin. You have to confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ drug an old rugged 
Pentecost. Up go Godless Hill when he didn't have to, that he allowed himself. You know, Jesus was had so much power. He could have came down off the cross at any time. He could have said, forget these people. They don't deserve for me to shed blood for them. But he hung there on that cross and laid his head in the locks of his shoulders. And he gave up the ghost that a sin-sick sinner such as myself could be free of my sins. All I got to do is say on the third day, God rose Jesus Christ from the dead, and now he sits at the right hand of the Father, interceding on my behalf. And the Bible says you're saved. That's all you have to do. Is there one that may not know Jesus Christ in the pre-pardon of their sins. Is there one that may not know when you're laying here, that, 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 that body laying here prostrate, that your soul is going to be, be forever in eternity with Christ? If you're in social media land, I pray that after this you would reach out to this church, that somebody can get with you and walk you through the scriptures. Not just give you a scripture, but walk you through how you know for certain that you're saved. Is there one? The Lord is my shepherd, everybody. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. He goes before me. Hey! 
in my rush and my excitement, because when the word gets good to you, it just gets good. Amen. Mm -hmm. Uh, I shared with you about an escape hatch for the maze of our problems. I skipped point number four. <laughs> point one, the universality of our problems. Point two, the inability that we have to cope with our problems alone. Third, the escapability of our problems. But fourth, write it down, the predictability of providence. Mm -hmm. ah. But God is faithful. Yes. 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 And we'll just go home with that. Yes. <laughs> Amen. God, we thank you that you are faithful. You never let us down. Amen. You are faithful even when we are faithless. Thank you. Thank you. So God, we thank you that you can do anything but fail, and you never fail us. And so God, we leave here today knowing the predictability of your providence. Yeah knowing that the ratio of you taking care of us is 100%. That you'll be with us on Monday, you'll be with us all through the week. And so when the road gets rough and the way gets too hard to go, we will hold on to the idea, but God is faithful. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.